just arrived my new three element Yagi for 20 meters. It came next day and I must say it's well packaged in a very sturdy tube. All the items are wrapped together within the tube. The fittings are bagged individually according to their use. the packing list. Diagram with measurements has no written instructions um, which I was a bit concerned about. Square alley boom um, with its joiner. First I secured the sleeve uh, to the shorter section of boom and made sure not to over tighten it. I then temporarily fitted the bolt into the sleeve so I wouldn't lose it. The boom to mast fittings measure 2.1 meters from the end of the longer section of boom I proceeded to assemble the bracket. The fittings for the metal support plates for the elements. The plate for the driven element has 10 pre-drilled holes. Two bolts attach it to the boom. The plates for the reflector and the director only have six holes and are attached in the same way. All the plates mounted to the boom. The cross tees for the elements are the same length. The driven is split with an insulator. The connector is assembled for the direct coax connection. Again, the next sections of the elements are all the same length. These have a sleeve mechanically pressed onto it that slides into the adjoining tube. Conductive jointing paste on all joints. When inserted, leaving the correct length protruding as per the diagram, the clamp is clamping down on the press section which is a smaller diameter than the raised section. I had to tighten the clamps with a lot of force to get a tight joint. I'll talk about this at the end. To elements connected. It's just a case of identifying which sections from the measurements shown on the diagram. These are the driven outer elements to which the hockey sticks are connected. I presume the small section of tubing is used to adjust for the SWR.
the director outer elements. Fitting the clamps used to secure the elements to the boom. Four clamps for the split driven element. Now these strips of perspex and clamps are not shown on the diagram but I presume they are to go between the reflector and the driven element. That's as much as I can do in the garage. I keep my trailer tower at a local farm so we'll put it all together there. Now all assembled and with a small section of coax with ferrite rings fitted. Perspex fitted between the hockey stick of the driven element and the reflector. Sadly, the farm has a lot of electrical noise and many metal objects around. Um, I have use of the farmland that runs down to the ocean, so I leave my antennas in the longest length possible to save time on setting up on top of the trailer tower at 17 meters above the ground. Using my UKIP antenna analyzer, you can see a broadband antenna. This is without any adjustments to the measurements supplied. There is only one real criticism of the antenna. These are the ends with the sleeves pressed on, which I use to make the joint. There has been no care taken with the pressing. It may be said that it does not affect the mechanical strength, but I'm not sure. It looks a bit shoddy though. First on air tests are very very encouraging. I will make some direct comparisons uh, with my other beam which is a Cushcraft X7 Tribander in the near future. Is it a good antenna? Yes. Is it excellent value? Yes. Great service? Yes. Performance seems encouraging with some nice signal reports on a poor band. Just a shame about the poor pressings. More to follow.